always had the potential. But she was betrayed and even forgotten. But now she's back. She's here to reclaim and she's risen from the ashes. I'm talking about Amravati. Remember her name. Several years ago, they came up with a plan to build a futuristic city in India. As the development of the city gradually moved forward, it started to be seen as a matter of pride for Andhra Pradesh and for the people of India. But just when the city was about to take off, a political tragedy hit it so hard that all the hopes and dreams were nearly shattered. But it seems that with the new government in place, the city is going to rise up from the ashes. The land prices in the area are reportedly skyrocketing. The mood has changed completely and if things go according to plan, India is set to get an ultra-modern, world-class smart city. According to Andhra Pradesh government sources, Amravati is envisioned to be the people-centric pioneer smart city of India built around sustainability and livability principles. The city will be an economic powerhouse that will create a range of jobs for existing residents as well as provide high-tech and knowledge-based industry jobs to be globally competitive. The Amravati city development has six major goals. 1. World-class infrastructure. 2. Jobs and homes for all. 3. Green and clean. 4. Quality of life. 5. Efficient resource management. 6. Identity and heritage. As shown here, within the Amravati capital city, nine thematic cities are envisaged. These are government, justice, finance, education, health, sports, media, electronics and tourism. Each of these thematic cities will be a hub of activities serving a unique function and role within the capital city. It is said that the mastermind behind all this is this man, Mr. Naidu an ambitious man who wants Amravati to be developed as the most livable and happiest city in the world. Mr. Naidu's vision cannot be taken lightly. After all, many believe that he is the man behind a lot of good things that you see in Hyderabad today. And it is not just Amravati. Gift city in Gujarat, global city in Gurugram. There is a lot that India is planning and executing. These are just glimpses of the India that is re-emerging. It seems quite clear that if things go according to plan and if conditions are stable, India is going to build several Singapores and possibly add several Germanys to its GDP in the coming decades. But building world-class cities and infrastructure is just the first component of the ongoing transformation taking place in the new India. The second big thing taking place in India is the production of semiconductors. India wants to be a global chip powerhouse in five years. On February 29, 2024, India approved the construction of three semiconductor plants with investments exceeding 15 billion US dollars. The emergence of India as a global chip powerhouse can transform the country's manufacturing landscape. The third massive thing is India's sensational arrival in the world of artificial intelligence. The country is being seen as an emerging AI superpower. Back in 2021, it was reported that India has eclipsed even the US when it comes to writing AI code. And let's not forget that even the US tech giants use their Indian AI labs to develop technologies for commercial use. When it comes to AI research, three things are considered significant. One is AI talent. India can have plenty of that. The second critical component is huge amounts of data. India has plenty of that too. And the third thing is computing power. In relation to that, when reports emerge that the Indian government is considering a proposal to set up a cluster of 25,000 graphic processing units, many felt that India intended to be a serious player. It seems that India is leapfrogging in the sectors that define the future. Artificial intelligence is the potential of machines to impersonate the capabilities of the human mind, and the goal of AI systems is to tackle complex problems in similar ways to human logic and reasoning. The fourth massive thing that is almost inevitable in the next five years in India is the official arrival of its first bullet train. The swanky terminals, the state-of-the-art infrastructure and the idea to connect multiple economic zones with a bullet train network is expected to transform India's core structure. But it is not just about bullet trains, Vande Bharat or Namo Bharat. It is also about India's tremendous progress in railway electrification and developing new railway stations. 
However, India should take more measures to tackle the existing loopholes and improve the conditions of its thousands of trains that are a critical component of its economy. An overnight miracle cannot be expected, but with India's rising budget and rising economy, sooner or later, things are expected to improve. The fifth massive thing that India is likely to achieve within the next five years is becoming the third largest economy in the world. Observed here is the expectation of a GDP of $5 trillion in the next three years. Mind you, in PPP terms, which focuses on the purchasing power of the domestic currency within the economy, India is already the third largest economy, well above Japan and Germany. Take a look at this to understand where India stands in PPP terms, far above Japan, Germany and the UK. 1. China, 35.26 trillion. 2. USA, 27.74 trillion. And 3. India, 14.17 trillion. We need to understand that India's development is not based on a couple of sectors. Defense manufacturing, space, shipbuilding, automobiles, aviation, banking, renewable energy, healthcare, tourism, pharmaceuticals, biotechnology, India is rising in multiple domains. Particularly in defense, for a long time, India depended on other countries when it was about cutting-edge technologies and weapon manufacturing. But gradually, things started to change. India wants to be self-reliant and that was expected. The ambition to set up defense industrial corridors in Uttar Pradesh and Tamil Nadu is a part of that vision. Healthcare and pharmaceuticals are the other two sectors where India has an advantage. Its pharma industry and its rising healthcare industry are not just serving India, but the world in so many ways. To maintain momentum, what India needs is stability, not just for the next five years, but for at least another 10 years and even more. And if Indians can resist the external forces that seek to create chaos or violence in India for their own political and geopolitical greed, and if Indians can successfully resist the external forces that seek to install a puppet government in India, the Global South will finally have a reliable voice that nobody will be able to silence anymore. Yes, India's arrival as a fully independent and a sovereign superpower is a nightmare for the Western colonial criminal state. So, are you with India? Let me know what you think. Thank you for your time and I hope to see you again.